right, so we're just going to play this first shot through here. You have a lot more good than bad in your game. Okay, but there's certain things we're going to work on. Okay. I'll watch that one more time here. Now, what we're watching is a little bit slower than real-time motion. It's probably going to play normal as you watch it. I'm going to bump this up to real-time motion. When you watch this on your video on the copy, it's probably going to play fast. That's what I'm going to hear anyway. <coughs> so, in the setup position, I wouldn't change a lot. I may play with your ball position a little bit. It's a little bit high, in my opinion. And when that ball comes a little bit high, you see some of the balls above your shoulder. I know it may not feel like that, but that's why video is good. You see things that are hard to feel. Um, if we lowered that down, the elbow would also come back in here. Okay. Now, the main thing is with a five-step approach, you want to hold that ball pretty steady through step one. You have a lot of ball motion on step one. In fact, you start moving your elbow even before you start stepping. Okay. And you're moving out quite a bit on one. Ideally, we don't want to move on one. Okay. Now, part of the reason you have a high big push is because you're pushing early and your body's going to take more time by making that motion bigger. Okay. None of that's conscious. Your body's smart. Okay. I have a really good comparison for you. I'm going to put you back to your setup. And I use this guy a lot. And, you know, numbers will be similar as far as rev rate. Uh, but the, the, I'm going to show you has a ball speed probably a mile an hour faster than yours, if not a hair more. But I think it's going to be good for you to see how people get in different positions. Here's Rick Steele's speed. Now, do you know who he is? Yes. Okay, good. Great game. Like, awesome game. All right. In the setup, his ball is not quite as high. His elbow is a little further back. Okay. Now, he has a really small first step. He doesn't have to be this small, but... Notice he doesn't move the ball on one. Okay. You have a, have a lot of ball motion on one. Okay. We do want the first step to stay kind of small, so you can make half a step that might be a hair maybe. Okay. The bigger the first step gets with you, the more time you're going to have to push early. Okay. All right. Now on step two with him, the ball goes out and down a little bit. Okay. Ball goes out and see how you're locked already. He's not locked yet. You're locked with the ball chest high. Okay, so it's kind of a big motion, but I think it's that big because you pushed earlier. Your body's taking up time, but when you lock, see it pulls your shoulders forward. Yeah. Okay. At the end of the step, in relationship to the body, his center of the ball maybe just a hair below the belt. Yours is more like mid thigh, so your ball's lower than his. Okay. Not as low as you would think, considering you pushed way earlier, but that bigger push took up time. So probably what will happen is I have you push more on time, your push won't be as big as it will need to be. Okay? But even there, I'd say that's about a half a ball different. Okay? Not a big deal. Now, I'm going to click them both the same. Notice he's off his step already. You're not. Your feet are that much slower than his. Okay. Now, if I get you off your step, that took seven tenths of a second to get you off that step. One step ago, and you see, I got the back foot just touching on both ends. One step ago, there was a half a ball difference. Now there's a three ball difference. You're getting early. Okay, a lot earlier. <laughs> But that's why it's good to see a side by side like this. Okay. Now, <clears throat> on the next step, he will be at the top of his backswing at the end of four. There's no down motion. Okay. With you, you're going to be at the top of the backswing before you're done with your step, which is a sign of being early. Right there is the top of your backswing. Now, you have way bigger swing than he does, huh? You throw the ball over a mile an hour slower than he does. So it's uh, this sounds really backwards, but you're working hard to throw slowly. Okay. <laughs> now, if I get you off your step, and whenever we see down motion on a four, you're early. Okay. Now, there, angle of the arm is similar. Obviously, you're taller than he does. 
right? So same thing, the extra up motion in the back swing is just you taking up time. Your body's smart. Now another point of time that we can look at, okay? When the slide foot is all the way on the floor and it gets kind of right even with the nose, the toe even with the nose, the back arm should be close to parallel. You're a little bit early. His foot will stop as the ball passes it. You slide through your release point just a hair. That's a sign of being early. So you see you're fighting being early from step one. Okay. If we watch him in full motion, one, the shape of the push away. It's going to be nice, small, rounded motion. It's almost like it's just going around another ball. It starts going out, and then it just kind of comes around. Small, rounded motion. Okay. Your push away will be more kind of like that. Bigger. Okay. And again, that's probably just taking up time. Hi, Summer. I press me, so that's not there for you. All right, let's play this through here. So you, you kind of look at the shape of the wrist, it's more compact, but look at the footwork. It's fluid steps, it's quicker than a normal walk. Okay? If we go back and look at your footwork, much slower. Now, Rick is a senior bowler. You wouldn't have a senior pass you on your ninth approach. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Fair but see how that looks more kind of more tight. Yeah, yeah, just more not fluid. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, the watch your back swing. So I guess kind of steep going up right there. Okay. His back swing will have more of an arc, like a shape to it. It doesn't go up steeply. Okay. But you can see the difference in tempo. He doesn't fight me early, and that's normal speed of footwork if you're in time. We never want slow feet. And especially, and I'm sure you bowled juniors. Right? I, I actually did. Oh, you did? I, I, okay. Uh, bowled junior, I bowled for like a year and then they moved out to Spanish. So oh, okay. I actually started bowling for like the same time. Oh, okay. Yep. But you know how it goes. Yeah. If you have your motion and your score while well, you're told good bowling. Exactly. Yeah. I can only imagine how many times you've been told, like, slow your feet down. Exactly. Okay. I have probably 75 pros on my system. I have zero pros with slow feet. But that's just, like I said, the stock hands are bad for your body. So you're not bowling well, slow down. Okay. Well, if no high-level bowlers have slow feet, why would they, why would anybody think that would work? <laughs> think about any other sports you've played. What other sports have you ever basketball. played? Basketball. Okay. How about how often when you're having a bad basketball game, you're told to go slowly? <laughs> it's a sport. Exactly. There's no sport where it goes to be slow and careful. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you just see the fluidity of motion. He's not working hard. He's working less to throw it harder. <laughs> and almost the same rev rate, by the way. Okay. So we're going to work on a couple things with you. I, and mainly we're going to work on the timing of the push first. Okay. And we'll kind of see what happens with the footwork. Your middle steps are too slow. Okay. Okay. Yep, exactly. Correct. And, you know, usually the feet react to the swing. I think it's just been ingrained in you to try to keep your feet slow. Okay? And uh, I always feel bad for bowlers when, the you know, if you're early, you have to have quick feet to catch up. Um, Someone like E.J. Tackett. Now, he, he's very quick with his arm. His feet go quick. But that matches. Quick and quick matches. <laughs> quick and slow doesn't match. Okay? So a lot of this stuff you can actually do at home with a mirror. Um, let's go back to the side view. If I, this is a different shot, in fact, it's going to look the same. Now, I'm going to slow the speed down because I had it. My software has a little issue with it. Um, has a little issue where as we watch real-time motion, it's going to play like double speed when you watch it. So I just knock the speed down for us, and this will probably play more normally. Okay, but as we watch it, it's slow. 
as you watch it, it'll probably be normal speed. Um, but again, look at the shape of the push compared to Rex. Yours is way bigger. But I think it's way bigger because you had time to go big because you pushed early. Right. If you didn't push early, your body would be smart enough to know, we don't have time for that anymore. Okay. Again, if we go back to Rick, oops, that's not you. Or that's not Rick. We'll go forward. Again, look at the shape of the push. So it's fluid steps. It should be quicker than a normal walk. He doesn't walk that quickly if he's not bowling. <laughs> okay. All right, but that the ball will be off the hand cleaner. All, all good stuff will happen. So that's one of the main things we're going to work on. You can do this at home with a mirror, with a ball. Two steps and stop. You're not going to throw the ball in your house. Okay. You have a mirror to the right so you can watch yourself. In the setup, we're going to bring the ball down a little bit so the elbow's more below your shoulder. On the first step, as you watch yourself, no motion on one. So if you see yourself start to move the ball on one, you say, oh, I'm, I'm pushing early. You don't even have to feel it. You see it as you do it. Just like on video, you're seeing things that you don't feel. It's not that you don't have a good feel. Once it's a habit, you don't feel it. Mirrors and videos don't lie. <laughs> okay. Two steps and stop. No motion one, out and down to maybe like just below the belt on two. Maybe upper thigh instead of mid thigh. Okay. You could stand in place with the ball, not even take a step in, and look at the shape you create. We want a nice small round of motion. If you stood in place and you went up and locked, you'd feel how much effort that is. And you see the difference in the shape. So that's the main thing we're going to work on. We're going to try to get the no motion on one. The ball more just below the belt, maybe upper thigh on two. Okay. We'll do that first. We'll probably bounce back and forth, some on the push race, some on footwork. Probably the less rest of the more switching back and forth. It's hard to multitask. Okay. All right. Let's go to some back few stuff. Well, first of all, the finish. Your finish is actually really pretty good. And that is a huge bonus. Now, some shots you fall off, but most of the time you have balance. You have knee bend. You don't pop up crazy. And that's a huge advantage because most people that have a timing issue in the middle don't have a good finish. You find a timing issue and you have a decent finish. That's a big, big bonus. Okay. Let's go to back view here now. Now, drifting is always a result of alignment. Okay. Generally speaking, now do you line up with your toe or your inseam? Okay. Generally speaking, if you want to play like a normal shot, and what I refer to as a normal shot is angle through the heads, just a few boards of swing. You're not swinging it crazy. You're not playing straight. Kind of middle of the road. You should have your left foot nine to ten boards left of target you want to hit of the arrows. Okay? Now, you were hitting at 14. Your inseam is on like 18. That's only like four boards. Okay? Um, so that's what's causing the drift left. You had to get out of the way of your swing. I'm just going to mark your left heel as a reference. Um, step one will probably be fairly straight. I think you're overcrossing on two. Okay. Yep. Now, it is, we refer to it as a crossover step. We really want it kind of going in front. I think crossover sounds way cool, cooler than the in front step, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but you're actually crossing over. And now that step's in the way of the other step. <laughs> so now you have to go around yourself to take the other step. Okay. And that's probably why this foot kind of turns. See the back foot turn? That's because you're kind of going around yourself. Okay. I don't expect you to feel that, by the way. <laughs> Now, the fourth step kind of goes to the right. That's why it's in the way of your swing. Okay? Um, and now, you're going to have to slide left of the step. You and even here, it looks like you're going to hit yourself. Luckily, our bodies are smart, and they don't prefer that we hit ourselves with bowling balls. So right at the last second, you'll get your knee out of the way. <laughs> but whenever somebody does that, it looks like they have a broken leg. <laughs> okay? So overall drift, like on this shot here, probably about six, seven boards. Okay? Drifting left is not an issue as long as you're consistent. The bigger the drift, the harder it is to be consistent. Okay? So we may work a little bit. We'll probably work on timing mostly today. But when you go home, you can move your feet over a little bit farther away from your target and almost feel like step two goes a hair to the right. 
just to not cross over. And kind of see what happens with four. It sounds like you've had a, a problem with four going to the right. That's why you hear yourself an announcement. You always have to kind of trick yourself to the opposite of what your body's used to. So if four goes to the right, you have to think the four is going to go left. We really don't want four going left. We just don't want it going to the right as much. Right. So, it'll be straighter, but it'll feel left. Because right now, to the right feels straight. Okay. So it's a mind game you got to play with your muscles. But if step four wasn't as much to the right, you wouldn't have to get out of the way with your slide as much. So I don't see the slide as a big issue. I think step four going to the right is kind of causing your slide to have to go left. Okay. Just as a comparison, I'm going to show you somebody from the back view here. Now this is like classic perfect everything, which you don't need, but I'm going to go really old school here. And we're going to go back a few. Now he is setting up on 26 27. We're going to go to a full screen here. He's playing 16 17 with just a few boards of swing. But you can just see he walks pretty darn straight. <laughs> so the second step comes in front, doesn't really cross over. That provides a slot for the ball. Okay. So four just stays in tight. Now watch the slider will come right back under him. Same board. Okay. You're sliding away because your step four was in the way. Okay. okay. And if you came back under yourself, it would have hurt. <laughs> okay. Uh, but he's about that 10 board. Now, if he wanted to play straight, he'd have his left foot only six, seven boards left of target. If you wanted to really, really open up, maybe 14, 15 boards. So between about seven and maybe 14 boards left of target, depending on how much angle, assuming you want to walk straight. I don't think you need to walk straight. A lot of power guys drift a little bit left. That's fine. Even if you moved over a few boards more compared to your target, you probably wouldn't drift as much. Your body would kind of figure it out. Right. Okay. Swing-wise, not too bad. You might push a little bit to the right. Say the ball goes to the right of your shoulder right there. The more you push to the right, the more the back swing will come left. Okay. And then you can see how there's a little extra motion at the top of the swing that's playing because you're early. It kind of goes out, gets back in, and you get right back in where you want it to be. Okay. So with a push, you might feel like you push a hair left to not push right. Okay. And some of this stuff may change as we work on timing. Okay. And from the back view, you cannot see timing. So what was we saw easy from the side, we can't see any of that from the back. You can't see when you're pushing. You can't see the shape of your push ray. Harder to see the footwork. Okay. Correct. And then I always feel bad for people that look decent from the back and say, eh, something's off. You know, look fine. Stop complaining. Right. <laughs> okay. So, so from the back is really just for directional stuff. Okay. All right. Let's go to hand motion release. And this should look pretty good. Just watching your ball roll. It should be fine. We always want you on the back of the ball. If you're a little bit on the inside, that's fine. <clears throat> Coming to the release, you'll probably still be a little bit on the inside with the fingers. Yep. And then right at the release, a little hand motion and through. Absolutely fine. No issue. And again, that's a huge, huge advantage because most people that fight a timing thing don't have a good release. <laughs> so you're way ahead on, on like body position and release. Probably more muscle. The more you try to help, the more you turn early. Gotcha. Okay. And you know how that goes. Your ball's not kind of reading right. Okay, and then you think, well, I'm going to make this one read stronger. And then what happens, you work really hard for a crappy ball reaction, usually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, more muscle, more consistency, less clean off your hand, all that stuff. But, I mean, really important things is the release position, and you're fine. So that's a huge bonus. We're going to work on the side view stuff, because that's where I really see something that's out of the parameters I usually see work. Okay. All right, let's stop recording.